Welcome to Juniper Ridge. I know it's Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of you out there, all you fathers. What do you like to do better than barbecue on Father's Day? Well, that's my main thing, so that's what we're going to do. Been at it for a while, but <clears throat> I didn't want to bore you guys with a whole bunch of other, you know, just sitting and watching and whatever. So we're about three quarters or better through this grill, and we've been out here for about an uh, hour and 45 minutes. So we have two grills going again, but today I'm not on the 24 kettle which is, remember the steak and chop searing burger kettle. I'm on the deep kettle. This is the uh, 20 inch Mama Q and it's way deeper. So what we're doing today is indirect cooking. I've got two pork prime ribs and a pork loin in here. And on the gas grill, I've got stuffed pasillas. I have mushrooms going and I have uh, zucchini and foil packs. So they're rolling over there. And uh, today I didn't use any wood. It's just charcoal, make it plain, simple, easy. For those of you that don't, you know, I don't know how to use the wood. I don't I don't wanna go and load the, the kettle. I don't wanna do all, I just wanna cook. Well, this is today's grill. So take a look. And the cool thing is, I have two um, charcoal holders that are molded. It's kind of curved and then straight, both sides. So I have two of them, and you load your coal in those holders, and they sit on either side, and you cook it right down the middle. So we've got a beautiful grill going. That's literally just the meat juice. I've done nothing else. Um, the pork loin was marinated a little bit, about 30 minutes. These are dry rubbed, or the uh, um, pork prime ribs are just dry rubbed. And look at the moisture coming out of them. But we're gonna add a little bit to it here. So if you go online, Amazon, whatever, and you look at uh, charcoal dividers or uh, charcoal holders, uh, charcoal tins, anyways, you're, you could find these and they come in a set and they're like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks a piece and you can get those. And this is a perfect indirect cook. So literally your heat's coming from either side and your meat's right down the middle. This was the marinade with the uh, pork loin that's in the middle and we don't waste any of the juice. So we're gonna go ahead and hydrate him with the remaining juice. Get the rest of that seasoning on there. Like I said, these are about three quarters of the way in. They take about an hour and 45 minutes. Um, I've been on them about an hour and a half, hour and 20. So that's how long the roast has been going. Um, the peppers and everything else I put on about 15 minutes ago. Because you, you kind of got to divide it up. So everything finishes at the same time. And what, what do we have here? What do you say? What is that? That's butter. And the reason for the butter is it rehydrates the meat. It makes it juicy. And it's damn good. So we're going to go down with the butter. And then we're just going to lid it off. And let it go. And let it finish. So there's the, the butter on top of the two pork prime ribs and the pork loin. We'll just close her down and let her go. Got the College World Series on over there. Volume's off so we don't get a copyright. And I'll check this grill. Well, the peppers are done. So I'm gonna get a flip on these uh, mushrooms and squash real quick and I'll get you a view of that here in a minute
we'll just do a quick walk over, take a peek, then we'll come back. All right, and we're moving. So the pasillas are done. And then on the left, you've got zucchini. On the top, we've got um, mushrooms. They're both olive oiled and seasoned. They've turned out real nice. They're getting nice and soft. And you can hear something's going on in town because all the fire stations and everybody are heading out. And then we'll plop it back down here. There we go. So even with no wood, you can still see that that little grill is just smoking away. That's just charcoal. I've added nothing to it today. For a little bitty town, I tell you what, we live close to a main, uh, the main highway and road is literally about uh, 100 yards away from our property line. So they always head up and down. Any emergency that goes on, that's the main road they go through. And I always say I've been in big cities. I hear more sirens here than I ever hear in a big city. So for what it's worth, because we're close to the main road, we're going to hear it. No big deal. But hey, that's a pretty good view there. Just letting her smoke and do its thing. But my big deal was is how to indirect cook. And, uh, you know, I switched off the 24, went to the deeper 20. We lost four inches of grill space, but we gained in depth. And the reason we did that is because those charcoal holders, if you put them on the 24, they literally touch the grill because it's not a deep grill. Now, I've got an, another grill that is uh, identical to a Weber. And it was another grill that somebody tossed, didn't want, was given to us. And I've got to rebuild it. But it has the deep well and it's a 24. So that grill is going to go down on the other side of the gas grill. That's the new addition. And, in, and all these grills literally, except for this, you know, $850 grill, um, but this, this was one, so there's still no money in it. I mean, I have more money in the little tiny two Smoky Joes and that little Smoky Joe than I have in the two kettles and the gas grill. So, I mean, all said together, 25, 50, there's 75 bucks, 95. So $95 is what's in this entire grill lineup. That's it. And, and if you watch at yard sales or people just put these out, like this grill, the couple was moving and they had this um, 20 inch Weber and, and they didn't want to take it. They just didn't have the room. So they gave it to, to me. So I'm like, heck yeah, I'll take the, I'll take the grill. And uh, I don't turn any grills down. And if I'm not going to use them, I'll repurpose them and I'll give them to other people for them to use. And matter of fact, I found a beautiful, it was a Kenmore barbecue, which I'd never seen before. Uh, blue and chrome gas grill. It has the, I mean, all kinds of attachments, Fla the flavor bricks that go in the bottom of the grill, the whole nine yards. And the people just wanted to get rid of it. So I grabbed it up, gave it a test run, cleaned it all up, made sure it worked good. And took it up to my buddy's house, and he's got a brand new, well, uh, brand new to him grill. And I'll tell you what, we've cooked on that thing, and it works fantastic. So, you know, everybody says, well, barbecue is so expensive. Well, not really. I think the most expensive piece in my entire barbecue set is my Santa Maria grill and fire pit that I have down in my lower yard that I showed you guys the other day and that's him right out there and I just took the lid off and that guy was 150 bucks that fire pit Santa Maria grill but it, it was well worth it to me so I have more in that pit down there than I have in all of these grills sitting here 
So I guess my, my whole premise of this is you can grill really good food and it's not expensive for the equipment. Now it looks like I have this giant lineup of stuff, but literally it's just a collection. If I drive by a yard sale and I see a kettle sitting out there for five bucks, I'm picking it up. You know, a Weber kettle, I'm picking it up. I'm taking it home. That's just the way it's going to be. And if it can replace one of my pieces, then I'll replace the piece of my grills and I'll send one of these pieces to another home that will be used. Of course, you got to teach people how to use these because they don't know. But it's super simple. Like when I lived in Louisiana, I had a, I had a gas grill. It was all stainless steel, but it's extremely humid. So it was brand new. But in one year from the humidity, um, it literally rotted out and it was no good. It had to get sent to the metal recyclers. It was just, there was nothing left. It even ate the, the tubes for the gas coming into the grill. We live in a kind of a <clears throat> dry climate here. <coughs> Sorry. We live in a dry climate here. That doesn't happen so much here. But in areas like Louisiana, Alabama, in the south, you're going to have that issue. So if I see a grill, I'm grabbing it. I'm going to refurbish it the best, you know, to the best of my ability. And I'm going to pass it on to somebody. You know, if I'm not using it, somebody will be using it. And it will be active. But the main thing is, you don't have to go out and spend 500 bucks on a grill to get good food. Like this is free and it's cooking up all this. How beautiful is that? It's going to be best tasting food you ever have. And I didn't pay a dime for it. I got $19 in this 24. I mean, you can't go wrong. Yes, this big smoky mountain is a spendy guy, but it, we won it. So um, it was my brother-in-law's. He won it at a, at a a raffle at a supermarket here locally and man it, it's been great to have and i use the heck out of it he doesn't have the room so when he wants to barbecue something up he'll come over and bam we'll get on this thing but not only that if he wants to cook something and go serve for his friends or whatever he'll come and cook here and he's got two kettles there two smoky mountains here and we have a warming grill that we use that's a gas grill that costs absolutely nothing i literally just grabbed it Walked it down the street, brought it back here, made two heat shields, and away we go. There, there's nothing wrong with recycling grills. Like I said, the most expensive grill of this entire set was that $50 um, little Smoky Mountain that I bought. Because I wanted to have it. Because if I don't want to cook, you know, if I'm not doing six, like I had four, 40 pounds of pork, pork, uh, butt on this and I could have done more but I did 40 pounds on this guy and I did 10 pounds on my little guy so if it's just us I'm not going to do 40 pounds like this is for Thanksgiving Christmas we're having a big celebration the little guy is what I use just for us if I want if I want to have that uh, same result as this guy but on a smaller level and I can cook uh, brisket on there a turkey I can do a 13 15 pound turkey on there you know, I don't like turkey personally, but a lot of my family does, so I'll smoke them up a turkey. Then I'll come over here on these kettles and cook me up some pork or whatever I want. Not a big deal. You know, but the, the whole thing is, this whole variety of stuff is really easy to find. People put, put stuff out because they don't know how to use them. Grab those. And then, this is the whole point of the channel you know, is to let you guys know how to use it. And uh, the product's fantastic. So we're just about uh, ready to wrap uh, the meat up. And I'll show you again with a fork. I don't have to temp check. Fork it. You give it a wiggle. That's done. That one's got a little bit more. That one's done. Okay. If you don't like foil, then uh, get you some copper foil. It, it is more healthy. I get that. I can't find it in my area. I looked everywhere. So I'm still using tin foil.
So let's wrap these guys up. And then I'll put the last thing I got on the grill, which is my, my daughter loves barbecue tomatoes. So I'm going to cook her up a few of those. Super special for her to go with dinner and her mushrooms. And the zucchini will go for my son and father-in-law. And I don't eat the vegetables because I'm on a carnivore diet or meal plan, I guess you'd say. So we're going to wrap those up and we'll set those over actually on the uh, 24 inch kettle just to rest before we pack them anywhere. We know the pork loin is ready. That's good to go. Beautiful. Get him wrapped up good. And the reason I wrap them is that's a little warm. So we're going to go over and use our Smoky Mountain for a handle holder. I wrap them because they're going to go on a rest and retain their moisture. So now we're going to get that back pork prime rib, get him wrapped up. And they literally don't have to be on any heat right now. They just need to go on a rest. And I'm going to flip the color of the foil so I know which is which. Dull side out is going to be the pork loin. Shiny side out will be the pork prime ribs. This is my favorite cut of meat. The pork prime rib is my absolute favorite cut of meat ever. And being Father's Day, I was lucky enough to be able to do that. Prices of meat are going crazy. And then we'll take this guy, move him sideways, dead on center in the middle. Now look at the juice coming out of him. And I bet he's probably maybe five minutes, seven minutes to go. He's close, but he's not done yet. And we'll let that heat on both sides take care of that guy. And then uh, let's go ahead and, you know what? Let's get them tomatoes on. That'll be just about right. When those tomatoes are done, then you know that that pork loin's ready. And we're going to indirect cook those too. Right down the middle. I'll let them finish up. So that's pretty. Get her lid back on. Let her go. We're going to turn this stuff down over here. Take it down to one grill. I'm going to move the mushrooms over. Zucchini's ready, so it's just on a warm. And you know, on a quick night, it's nice to have that gas grill. Because I can come out after work, cook up, cook up a meal while I'm working in the shop. Do whatever I got to do, and it's, it's pretty much self-managing. I don't have to worry about the coals or whatever. But I mean, I still I still work on the cold the the kettles when I'm out here. It just depends on what mood I'm in. But if it's a real quick meal, the gas grill's nice. But standardly, I use that for a warming grill, and it works fantastic. So um, it's gonna be another good feed, and uh, can't beat it. But I like the flavor of the kettles, and then I use the gas grill mainly for a warming grill. Like I said, on a quick night, I'll throw wood on there. I'll get a real good flavor into the meat, and it'll be a good meal too. But it's a heck of a lot better spending 30 minutes on the gas grill cooking dinner than over a stove in the house heating the house up. So I, that's how I cook pretty much all spring, all summer, and all fall. When it's warm outside, I do not cook in the house. Never do. I even have the uh, stand-up cook grill. I've got a two-burner. My father-in-law's got a three-burner gas stand-up grill. I've got a burner on the, in, on the end of the of my gas grill right there that I can, you know, if the kids want spaghetti or whatever, I can make spaghetti right there on that grill. And then when I go camping, I've got a four-burner um, 
little portable that uses the small green bottles. I take that with us. Dutch oven, 24 inch cast iron pan. And oh, really cool. So you'll get to see this in action this summer. But part of my outdoor cooking system, when you go camping, literally is this little unit right here. It's upside down. Ooh, hello phone. Don't freak out on me. <laughs> Watch the sky. All right, let's try this. Let's try and go down. Oh, that's up. So there's the there's the griddle I paid 150 bucks for. And, and I'll show you that here in a second. But this little grill that goes over a fire that you build, I take that camping and this is a godsend. This is 20 bucks at Walmart. And this little thing is amazing. I can cook on my 24 skillet. I can put my cast iron in the fire indirect, bake up a, a roast, whatever I want to do. I can fry onions, mushrooms, anything I want to do, bacon, whatever, right on this little guy right here. And he's only 20 bucks. But this guy, you can see the grill a little bit better. You get it a little closer. There's the grill on it, and it's got a high bar right here. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the grill lifts up on that bar, and you can swivel it around. I have it down low because I had it put away for the winter. But this grill is freaking awesome. Love that thing. And there's some chickens running around. Being happy. Ice browns. I think we have three black ones in there. The rest of them are ice browns. Really good egg layers. That's a, po a pile of pine that I'm seasoning. The weeds grew over it, so I just kind of chopped them down. But I'll get that out of there. Put it in the storage bin. That's what I use for my wood stove. Right there. That's in the shop in the winter. And it heats my shop up. So, there's a backside view of the grills. Got to get around this stinking umbrella that blew up. Let's go check that pork prime rib. I think it's only been about five minutes, four minutes. We'll give it a look. And let's see here. Let me reset her. Hello. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's grab our fork. Oh yeah, she's just just slid off. Just about ready. Give him about another two minutes. And then uh, I'll pull him, wrap him, and the tomatoes will be finished up. And then dinner's done, like literally. I'll tray everything up, take it down, serve the family, and we'll have a good time. And that'll be the end of it. Once I get to 500, I can start putting community posts out with pictures and stuff, but I'm having a hard time uploading picture videos. So when I go to serve, I haven't been able to put the, put the pictures back up for you guys to see them plated. So that's something I'm looking forward to when I hit 500. I'll be able to put those community posts out. The barbecue was this, and I'll, and I'll be able to show you the food in those community posts. But can't really do it until we get there. No big deal. Don't care. And I can just take a quick right turn. Oh, there we go. All right. Yep, everything's ready. You can always feel when you're cooking in your foil or your copper or whatever. If they're soft, if they're juicy, they're moist, they're done. So that's all finished.
Let me pan back around. And we have a visitor. Come on in. Go over there by the little girl, honey. Go over by mom's girl. This is Mackenzie. This is my daughter. Tell the channel hi. Konnichiwa, ni hao, hola. She's working. She's working on about eight languages, which is amazing. So, how's uh, how's the barbecued food, honey? Uh, it smells really good, and I think it's gonna taste amazing. How was last night's? It was incredible, especially the baked potatoes. Perfect. All right, sweetheart. Well, food will be in shortly. I will come and feed you, and. Uh, Do you need any trays or anything? Nope, got my tray out here already. Thank you. So welcome to Father's Day. Barbecue's about done up. I'm gonna wrap that one up here shortly. So let me get my foil and we'll get that guy wrapped up, moved over. And we'll send you guys off to go enjoy the rest of your night. I got to do is finish the tomatoes and that's done Whew, she's hot she turned out nice All right, they're on a rest. Now just tomatoes. They're cooking good. Tomatoes will probably take maybe five minutes. They'll be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut her off here and let this finish. Tray everything up, go feed the family, finish my ball game. Oklahoma's winning. They're beating uh, Notre Dame right now in the College World Series. So that's awesome. Uh, big shout out again to Tie Guy 266, GWT333, Tommy Trucker, Little Blinky, uh, Coda B123, all the freedom fighters out there that, that are uh, streaming, putting videos up, and you know, uh, another one, Trap Lines and Inlines, big inspiration for me. I've watched him since he was in high school, living off grid. Um, Kyle's Cabin, big shout out to Kyle and Sierra. Go check them out. Um, I will, not this video, but probably the next, drop the links in there for the streamers and um, some of the channels on YouTube. Now, just because I follow them, not because, like, I don't talk to Kyle and Sierra. I don't talk to trap lines and inlines, um, other than just like you, just commenting on there. I just admire what they do, and I support what they do. So I'm subscribed to their channels, and I check their stuff out. But it's all good stuff. So thanks for joining me on Juniper Ridge, and we'll see you probably on the project in the shop next time. Much love. Catch you later.